What's up, Snell? Welcome to a new episode of Vital Vinyl Vlog. Today we're gonna be blasting Denver, Colorado's Black Curse, Endless Wounds. Just, what, what, what more do I need to say? If you haven't heard this yet, what are you doing? Seriously, like, what are you doing if you have not heard this yet? You are missing out on one of the fucking sickest releases of 2020. Eli from Spectral Voice on vocals. And he sounds like a goddamn demon. I love it. And such a fucking sick promo photo. Just a callback to the days of old. It's cool as fuck, like, seriously. I, I love it. And this whole release is just one of those that gets... Oh, you, you're, you'll be squeezing invisible grapefruits in no time and banging your head into oblivion. I've also seen this gorgeous cover art in so many metal memes, it's ridiculous. I get it, he's having explosive, demonic diarrhea. Get it? Metal memes are kind of weird. Like, I, I honestly didn't really know much about meme culture until like recently when there's like all these maggot stomp meme pages on Facebook and shit, and they're like beefing with one another. It's like, what are you guys doing? Like, I, I get it. It's a cool distraction. I, cool meaning, like, you know, sometimes it makes me laugh. Other times I'm like, I, I don't get it. Like, who's that guy that's, like, sitting back and it's like, make me change my mind or something, you know? Like, I, I just, there's certain things I don't really get. But I'll tell you one thing I do get, and that is generosity from some of my favorite musicians and that means a lot to me and especially to get a letter from Damien Fenton if you know who Damien Fenton is he plays in one of my favorite death metal bands Pissgrave but before Pissgrave there was one of the fucking greatest and I'm not over-exaggerating here. In my personal opinion, this was the band that grabbed me by the balls and was like, yo, there's this whole genre of bands playing as slow and as heavy as possible. Check it out. And it started with disembowelment. If you know about the disembowelment tape story, then you know it. If you don't, I don't feel like repeating it, but hey man, appreciate the interest in this shit. Stay safe. If I find any copies of the full length, I'll send you one. Hails Damien. And Damien is talking about Odie Sanic. Odie Sanic was one of, if not the heaviest fucking true funeral doom bands in the fucking genre and he was rad enough after checking out the accursed womb a radiated goat larva track which is a funeral doom track he was like yo uh have you ever heard of this project and i was like holy shit like i had no idea that you were even a part of this and you have no idea how fucking stoked I am to physically have a copy of Four Burials and the Otisanic Coffins Split, both on Parasitic Records, early Parasitic Records. I think one of these is like Parasitic's 18th LP release. And one's like the 34th. Yeah, like P Parasitic Records number 34 right here. Four Burials. And it's called Four Burials because you have one track of, at the time, four of my favorite 
Doom Bands, and it starts off with Odysanic, Seven Are They, holy, just holy shit, check it, check it out, Loss to Pass Away, Death March Towards My Ruin, and we have Orthodox with Heritage, and Mournful Congregation Left Unspoken. Gorgeous, gorgeous stuff here. Double LP. Wow. And, you know, the Mournful Congregation song. Music and lyrics by Mournful Congregation. 1995 to 1996. Recorded by Mournful Congregation in 2007. This has, like, MySpace links and everything. So fucking cool. So sick. Odysanic, Loss, Orthodox, and Mournful Congregation. These bands, like, legitimately not only helped me through some very, very difficult personal matters during this time period, but they still hold up today. And that's what's so fucking sick. Like, it's... If this was to drop today, they, this would probably sell out. Like, immediately. Like... You have Loss on a split with Mournful Congregation. And Orthodox is a little bit, you know, not as popular. But Odistanic, holy fuck. Like, I'm not even fronting whatsoever and kissing ass. This is some of the heaviest shit ever. In the words of Paul, this is true doom. And... Just look at this fucking bad boy. Double LP starts off with Otisanic, then Loss. And like, you can just tell that, like, this whole, re both of these releases, especially the coffin split, that led. Oh, I'll get into it in a second, but let me finish going through the four burials split. Because I, I really don't have words for some of these songs. Like, they're just, you know, absolutely depressing. But sometimes there's, like, a little glimmer of hope. And it's kind of fucking sick. Like, Mournful Congregation, Left Unspoken. That track, wow. Like, right now I have a copy of Mournful Congregation, The June Frost on tape sitting at the Philadelphia Hub, along with the anhedonist Netherwards tape. So I'm like, fucking getting crushed by tons of doom right now. But like, a label like Parasitic, heavy hails to Tim for just going all the fuck out always when it comes to his vinyl releases. Nothing's half-ass, it's all or nothing. It's fucking great. And this is one of those releases I never thought I would own a physical copy of. But when it comes to the Coffins and Odie Stanek split, that's a little bit different. See, I actually had a copy of this back in the day. And the cover is this way. And this is a very special release for numerous reasons. But on a personal level, this is so important because I became obsessed with Coffins. And this was before Coffins started putting out a split every five minutes. Like, I remember talking to a friend of mine that he might still be in... Uh, Bong Ripper, but he was like, if you like this split, check out Mortuary in Darkness, and that really opened the floodgates to Death Doom Metal. Like, I obviously knew it existed, but that is what took me down that specific rabbit hole. But this right here, this is Coffin's best material when it comes to splits and whatnot alongside Mortuary and Darkness. And Otis Stanek, first off, 
it, this is a heavy release in way more ways than one. Arise, Devour, Much Flesh, number 29 of 111. Now, like I was saying, on a personal level, this is something that changed my life. But, cover art dug into paper by Steve Mullay, with the very hand that he took his own. Rest in peace, a body so full of truth, I saw it grow over half my blurry life, kindred in every sense to be lowered into ground. Soil sealed forever in this desperate song, rest well, I know it was a forever tiring life, we may be right behind you. Like, that's... That's some fucking heavy shit. Let us give thanks unto Satan and rejoice in the good will he has shown us. The artwork here is absolutely fucking phenomenal. It's hard to hold up because the LP is this way. And this is Parasitic Records number 18. Odie Stanek and Coffins. Probably both bands' best material as well. Like, Odie Stanek have Narcotic Hues, which is around 27 minutes of just some of the most fucking devastating doom you're gonna ever hear in your life. Like, I'm not joking whatsoever. This is not something the fucking, like... And I've heard heavier. You probably haven't. And I'm dead fucking serious. Like, I, I don't care, you know... If you're a fan of Funeral Doom, Death Doom, any type of Doom. If you don't fucking think that this is a heavy release... I don't know what to tell you. You're probably not listening to Doom, or you're just listening to the wrong fucking band. Like, oh my goodness. The cover art, like I said, alone is just not only terrifying, but just, I think it's gorgeous. And again, showing that Parasitic actually give a fuck about their vinyl releases. Like, look at this thing. It's a massive gatefold, and, like, this is cool as fuck as well. Like, I'm pretty sure that's drawn in blood. I'm not positive, but I'm pretty sure that's the way blood looks when you get it on paper, in my own personal experience. But, you know, I thought it was awesome for Damien to add this in, and... Again, I don't know if this came with the original release because I didn't have the vinyl copy. But this starts off with Evil Infection, Only Corpse, and Acid Orgy. And when I had a copy of this, it was a burned CD. And my buddy, he fucking copied him, you know, he went to Kinko's and made like a bootleg cover. And this was in black and white and shit. So I, like, I remember Parasitic was moving a couple years ago. And this was the first thing my eyes went to. It was, like, fucking $17. But by the time I, like, went and got $17, at the time I was making money, it was sold out. And understandably so. This has coffins covering Goat Lord. Yeah, it's awesome. And Coffins have three tracks on here. Evil Infection, Only Corpse, and then the Goat Lord cover of Acid Orgy. It's fucking awesome. And Odie Sanic play Narcotic Hues. And the lyrics here are... Uh, oh my goodness. Like... Fuck yeah. Like, that's all I could say is... Fuck yeah. It's something that... 
like, Doom sometimes can be looked at as, as lame as this might sound, the emo of extreme metal. Because sometimes it's really fucking serious and heartfelt. And I feel like a band like Odie Stanek, they really, you know, nail it. They nail those emotions through riffs and through just knowing how to fucking write a song that's over 20 minutes and can still keep your attention the entire time. This isn't some sleep dope smoker. And don't get me wrong, I love sleep. But it's a completely different being. Like... The original Dope Smoker mix. It's an hour and three plus minutes. Normally, I'm so fucking baked when I'm listening to it, the time just flies by. But even when I'm, you know, I'm not lit, I still, I love that fucking riff. I love the guitar tone. Even as ridiculous as the vocal, the, not the vocals, the lyrics are, you know, drop out of life with bong in hand, follow the smoke to the riff-filled land. Obviously, don't take that, see, don't take that literally, or your life is going to end up in the toilet, probably. But, like, with Odie Stanek, they really play this style of doom that really comes straight from the heart and straight from, like, just, ah, oh, fuck yeah. Coffins and Otis Stanek, Parasitic Records. This split right here is one of those records that legit changed my fucking life. I didn't know that stuff like this still existed at that time period. Like, you had bands like Graves at Sea putting out the Documents of Grief demo and stuff, and a Sonder, a Clarion Call. Whoever has those fucking rights, I think it's Nuclear War now. I am, you know what? I'm gonna get on my fucking knees. Please, please, YK, reissue a Sonder a Clarion call and weakling maybe while you're at it. That would be awesome. But these two splits right here. This is top of the line doom. Four burials and coffins with Otis Stanek. Both on Parasitic Records, kind of in its infancy here as well, which is fucking awesome. Like, Tim is one of those guys that anything like Parasitic puts out is. 98.7% pure hellfire. It's killer fucking shit. And it's just one of those labels that they don't really put out stinkers. Like, Tim has a fucking sick taste in music, and he's one of those dudes that, you know, really helped me find out about a lot of new bands that I wouldn't have known about otherwise. But this release right here, this was my introduction to Loss. And I remember, like, having such a hard time finding, like, physical loss material and whatnot. And I didn't have a vinyl copy of this. Again, this was all just digital files and shit because, like, it was hard as fuck to find. Like, I didn't know at the time, like, what websites to go to. I just used to legit pretty much only shop at my local record store because it was so fucking good. And that was the old Relapse store on South Street. I'm sure some of you visited it back in the day. Relapse switched some positions one day and all my friends that worked there were out of fucking jobs in under a day. It was fucked up and it's one of the many reasons I'm not stoked on Relapse Records these days. It's Ever since that happened, it left a sour taste in my mouth. 
And I think it's awesome that they have a band like Outer Heaven on their label, and I'm stoked as fuck for those guys. They're working on new material, and I'm sure it's gonna be badass. But, when it comes to fucking doom metal, I highly suggest seeking out both of these split releases. Like, I was lucky enough that Damien saw my legit love for Funeral Doom and all things doom and gloom and sent these my way. Because, like, as soon as he asked, like, hey, have you ever heard Otisthanic? I was like, holy shit, fuck yeah, dude. Like, and we started talking and he was like, yeah, I played guitar. And I was like, wait, what? No fucking way. Like, because, trust me, there. I don't know if you've ever heard Serpent Throne. I don't know if Damien's in Serpent Throne off the top of my head, but again, that's a band with members of Pissgrave that play this type of instrumental, like, stoner doom. It's fucking amazing. Like, seriously, like, if you've never heard Brother Lucifer by Serpent Throne, check it out and thank me later. It is, wow, so good. I remember when Serpent Throne started playing basement shows and everybody was talking about it in the underground. And it was mostly like in the crust scene too. Because we were playing a lot of house shows with my old band at the time. And I remember everybody being like, yo, Serpent Throne. Like, you gotta see Serpent Throne. You gotta see Serpent Throne. And yeah, I remember seeing them at Johnny Brenda's and it was fucking heavy but the fact that Damien does appreciate that you know I am still interested in this type of kind of lost doom metal like there's a lot of releases out there that up until recently were kind of considered just MIA or there's labels that just sat on their asses and didn't do anything like, I'm stoked. One thing Relapse has done right recently is allowing more people to hear disembowelment. Putting out those disembowelment reissues is a big deal. I'm lucky enough to have the Roadburn edition, and that's fucking wow. And have the one uh, Morning September demo on cassette. But, like... The fact that anybody right now can go and buy Disembowelment's pretty much entire discography is amazing. Because I remember when they did the first reissues, I went out, I bought the t-shirt, the hoodie, the triple CD. I went all out when it came to Disembowelment to where I felt corny. I would go to a show, take off my Disembowelment hoodie, and have the same design on but a t-shirt. I was a total fucking fanboy, and I don't care, because it's awesome music. And the same with their Gotham. Like, I really feel like A Stream from the Heavens is one of the best fucking records ever. And recently, like, the demo got reissued on vinyl. That's fucking awesome. You're not spending your life savings on a demo. And just, fuck yeah. You know, when it comes to underground music, there's so many just hidden gems out there. Sometimes you need to just dig deep and go down that rabbit hole. This was pretty much a massive blast from the past, and I'm going to have a hard time getting these two records off of my turntable. Even though this is a double LP, so technically these three records off of my turntable. Coffins and Otostanic split 12 inch. And the massive four burials split with Otostanic, Lost, Orthodox, and Mournful Congregation. Fuck yes. Both released via Parasitic Records on vinyl. And we were blasting the mighty Black Curse, Endless Wound. Again, one of the fucking gnarliest of 2020. But 
As always, thanks for watching. You fucking rule. Thank you again to Damian Fenton. Keep on fucking making music. Like, seriously, you are a talented, awesome person. And heavy fucking hails, dude. And all you folks at home, thanks for watching. Thanks for the support, as always. Hails. Hey,